How's it going, everybody? I'm Christian. And I'm Alexis. And this is Winnie, our puppy dog. <laughs> and we are Tiny House Expedition. Mm -hmm. And today, we've traded in our 20-foot tiny house for a giant 37-foot tiny house rental at Tiny Tranquility, which is a community on the Oregon coast. Mm -hmm. So today we're gonna give you guys, we're gonna give you three things. A tour of this tiny house right here, and we're gonna show you the things that are cool about a rental, which this is. Guess what? A dog-friendly rental. And also, we're gonna show you the things that make it not a full-time tiny house. <laughs> And we hope this helps you in planning for your future tiny home because it's always such a great idea to see at rentals to get design ideas, mm -hmm. uh, special features, things that you like and don't like so you can figure out what's just right for you. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and get this thing started, all right? Come on, guys. Let's go. Come on, Wayne. Come on. So one of the features immediately that you see is this great deck with privacy screen and for a rental or a full-time home, especially one in a community, this is an incredible feature. Yeah, totally, this is the deal. And it gives you just that, it gives you privacy when you're sitting outside. So you, you can come out here, have some alone time from being in the house. You're not immediately in the community space, so yeah. it's, it's a kind of nice in-between. And this community gets a fair amount of looky-loos. <laughs> yeah, so we've noticed. Yeah. <laughs> So we definitely appreciated having dinner here with the little screen. Totally. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's go check out the inside. Come on, Win. Again, dog friendly. Come on. you guys but every time I go into a tiny house at a show or a rental the first thing that happens to me is I get blinded by the coolness by the adorability of it all because this is pretty darn cute right it's kind of funky but it's cute mm -hmm. and if you're staying in a rental thinking about your future tiny home then you know enjoy the adorable factor for a little bit but then you have to look harder for the mundane stuff like I noticed they have a jacket rack by the door. Love that. Yeah, yeah, That one thing that is absolutely necessary in all tiny houses are hooks all over the place. Can you ever have too many hooks? No, I don't think so. So points immediately yes, for that. totally. <laughs> so one of the things I forgot to mention was it's a three bedroom tiny house. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> one bedroom's on the main floor, one is up in the gooseneck, and one is obviously up these stairs in the loft. But right now we are standing in the kitchen. This is a galley style kitchen, which is in a lot of different tiny houses. And it's great for many reasons because like from here, it's right across from the door. So it's like a weird space to begin with. The one thing that is a pain in the neck is if you need to get by, this is what we would call a two butt kitchen <laughs> because of the railing over here, uh, but but it's possible. It's totally possible. And if you take one step forward, you get all the space in the world. <laughs> so this kitchen has some good features going. It has a dishwasher drawer, which I really like, and it has a fun noise when you open it. So <laughs> points there. Uh, it has a microwave slash convection oven. So you can do all kinds of things in that uh, from cooking a turkey to heating up your coffee. And then we have this big farm style sink and beautiful stone countertops. Now for a tiny house of this size, 37 feet. It's big. <laughs> I feel like this counter is smaller uh, than our 20 foot tiny house kitchen. Oh yeah, it totally is, you're right. It's deeper, but it's shorter. And personally, we cook a lot mm. at home. So for full time living, I would prefer more counter space, absolutely. Mm. Oh, and there is one thing that is that you can tell is missing from this space. It's a stove. And what they've done is they have um, a cooktop that's stored over here on top of the refrigerator. So you take it off the fridge, put it on the counter, and guess what you're doing when you do that? You're losing counter space. 
So it's even less counter space than um, you even thought it was. For a rental, not a problem. Not a, not the, not the, not a deal breaker. <laughs> <laughs> For a full-time living. Pain in the neck. Yeah. And one thing you could do to improve that would be to get a sink cover so that you have additional counter space while you're making a meal. That is a good idea. So then this is the living room. And as you can see, Winnie has already made herself at home. You see a little bit of her butt right there. <laughs> it's a very nice space for a living room. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I always pre appreciate a little open space, open floor space. And you certainly have that here. There's room for a, a puppy dog. Mm -hmm. There's room for two side tables that are really great for either working on your laptop or having a meal while sitting on the sofa. Mm -hmm which is needed because it's the only table in the house. In my opinion, every single tiny house needs a table, whether it's an office desk or a actual kitchen table or dining table. And going to tiny house rentals and, and seeing how different tiny houses configure their table is always a good idea. One thing I really appreciate about this tiny house is the TV placement. I can comfortably view my favorite show, The Great British Baking Show, <laughs> <laughs> um, while sitting here by just pulling out the arm just slightly, the angle's really nice, it doesn't hurt my neck. Sometimes you'll see a TV in a tiny house that's mounted way up on the wall. While it seems like a good idea because it's an open space where you can tuck in the TV, you have to think about the comfortable viewing. Looking like this isn't very comfortable. So keep that in mind. But when you don't want TV, there's another kind of entertainment they have here, and that's the fireplace. So just past the living room right behind me is the downstairs bedroom. And as you can tell, there's no bed in it. Just a chair and a beanbag chair. Weird, right? It has a Murphy bed. And I love Murphy beds in tiny houses especially in downstairs bedrooms, because you can make the most of your limited floor space by tucking away the bed when you're not sleeping, and then you have all this play space on the ground, you know, maybe if you're a kid, or project space for a grown-up, or you might even be able to have a Murphy bed that has a tabletop that pops down to turn it into an office. This one doesn't have that, but you can imagine. A Murphy bed's great in a rental, because you don't have to use this room as a bedroom. You can put your luggage in here, like Alexa said, you can have a kid play in there, and just use one of the other two bedrooms that are in the house. So one of the things with this whole space, this whole living kitchen space, that feels a little bit intrusive is this guy right here, is this railing. Because the steps stick out just far enough, uh, to be safe, they wanted to put a railing, which is a great idea. I just don't know if it needed to be this big, because <laughs> it's kind of huge. If I was living in this tiny home full time, I think I might like something slimmer, or even better yet, mounted on the wall, because they have this beautiful set of floating steps, and the, and the thing about those is they create an open feeling, mm -hmm. but then immediately adding this, especially when you're sitting on the couch, it just kind of feels like in your face. So it takes away from that important airy feeling that really makes tiny houses feel larger than they are. But for a rental, the railing is a no brainer. You absolutely want to have a railing in a, in a rental house. And so it, where it is a great idea, it's just uh, not the best execution, I guess. And up these set of stairs is a second bedroom. So it's a lofted bedroom up there. But one of the odd things that they did to me is they built a wall across there, which I guess isn't that bad for privacy, but it has this ridiculous little door to go into. Um, so for an adult, that just seems really, really odd. But I bet it's perfect for a kid. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, totally. And a kid in a full-time living situation might really like to have that extra privacy. So full-time living with a kid, this might make a whole lot of sense for you. Mm -hmm. For an adult, mm, not so not much. much. <laughs> <laughs> and then in here is the bathroom. And how amazing is this? There is actually a tub, <laughs> a full-size tub too. 
Think of all the bubble baths you can have in there. I mean, it's been years since I've taken a bath. I've showered. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see part of why the kitchen is so small in this tiny house is to make room for this giant bathroom. And depending on your needs and preferences, you might prioritize a bathtub mm -hmm. over counter space. I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't. Because like I said, I probably, you know, if I had a bathtub, I'd probably take one every once in a while. Yeah. So I'd rather have the counter space. Teach their own though. So this bathroom is actually longer than the countertop in the kitchen. So it is like 10 feet long in here, you know, by eight something wide. And they were able to get a tub, a toilet, a sink, uh, and a shower. So this right here is the sides of the shower. And to get all that in this space is, is pretty remarkable. And as you can tell, it's also the way up to the bedroom. While they have all this great stair storage. Oh yeah, there's a bunch. All drawers. All the drawers. <laughs> Two thumbs up for that. There is one missed opportunity in this big bathroom, mm -hmm. which is more shelving, more storage. Um, this whole blank open wall is just screaming for cabinets or shelves. And if I was living in this full time, I would definitely want more of that. Mm -hmm. As a short-term rental, not so bad. Not so bad. <laughs> it does have an exhaust fan, but it's only six feet high. It's not up in the ceiling. So it's actually in the wrong place. That's one of those things you have to think about when you're building your tiny house is to have a, something like that, to have an exhaust in the right place so it actually works well. So just up these steps is a private bedroom how cool is that? And here we are. <laughs> a nice cozy bedroom. Yeah. That's standing height. Yeah, totally. I'm 6'2", and it's a little higher than, than me on this side. It's awesome. <laughs> We're talking true tiny house luxury when you can achieve that. Mm -hmm. So I think a bedroom in a gooseneck is really the way to go because you can get the height, you can get uh, so much more space in here. Even with an office or a bedroom, this is, having a gooseneck is definitely a really good option for it. Gooseneck bedrooms are also great for fitting in a real closet. Oh yeah, totally. This one has a little bitty closet from here to here, <laughs> and it's locked, probably because it's a short-term rental and yeah. there's extra linens in there. But if I was living in this full time, I would like a full height closet. It would eat into the bathroom a little bit, but there's plenty of open space uh, on the other side of this wall. I think you could accomplish it. Oh yeah, you totally could. And one thing I always think is not a good idea for a bedroom is you can see the light from it right here is a skylight. To me, a skylight is silly in a bedroom because Right now it's summer and the sun comes up at 5.30 in the morning and the light starts pouring in this room right here first. Yay! Um, so I wake up when it gets bright out. Yes, you can put a screen on there or something, which or shade, which would be great. But to me, a skylight is way better utilized in a bathroom or a living room. I think you're saying that because you're not a morning person. No, I'm not. But to be fair, neither am I. <laughs> So if you're a morning person and you don't mind living with the sunlight, uh, that's the way to go. Because you know, when you talked about you could put a shade on it, I'm thinking, well, if you're gonna have a shade on it, then kind of what's the point? Some people romantically talk about stargazing from their bed. <laughs> when I go to bed, I go to sleep. So this is personal preference on, you know, what's right for you and uh, if that's worth it or not. So one funny thing in here is, you know, you can see the bed, the pillows that are on this side of the bed but so is the TV. So that's a little odd. Um, it's got a, an arm that comes out, but it's a little hard to see the TV from sitting at this side of the bed. So, I mean, you can put pillows up against a wall over there and watch, not that big a deal, but that's just one of those weird things where planning ahead is important. So realizing that the bed was going to be turned around the other way, you know, you should probably put the TV on that wall. 
And that's kind of what we're talking about. When you go into a rental, planning for your future tiny home, think about all the mundane, boring stuff, like where do you store your trash can or your laundry basket? Mm -hmm. Um, because those kinds of details are what makes a truly functional home and truly comfortable over time because you don't want to have to be putting your trash can in the middle of the kitchen floor. You want it tucked away. Now you know our opinion. Let us know what you think about this tiny house. Is there something that is absolutely amazing and wonderful and yes, you're going to do that? Or is there something that is lacking? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.